Good afternoon friends I warmly welcome to all of you in the series of mechanics of solids uh, after some times we are meeting once again for the topic of a uh, shearing stress on beams so let us we recall what we learned up till now and what will be the today's objective of this particular session so we learned in the previous session about the introduction to the shear stress derivation of equation on shear stress we have solved certain problems related to the basic fundamental equation the today's session objective is defining the shear stress and draw the shear stress distribution diagram for rectangular, circular, I section and T sections and some other typical sections. Now let us revise that what we have studied up till now in the case of the chapter of the shearing stress on beam. We have seen in the previous session about bending stress in beams and uh, we seen that a part of a beam which is subjected to a constant bending moment and zero shear force there will be only bending stress in the beam the shear stress will be zero as shear force is zero in actual practice a beam is subjected to a bending moment which changes from section to section uh, we cannot say that the bending moment is constant throughout because depending upon the type of the loading bending moment goes changes from section to section hence at a section both bending stress and the shearing stress come across and today's session is intention is to found out the shearing stress on beam hence let us we go ahead and define what is the meaning of shear stress so due to this shear force which is acting on the beam the stresses will be developed and the stresses is known as the shear stress this shear stresses will be acting across the transverse sections of the beam and this transverse shear stresses will produce a complementary horizontal shear stresses which will be acting on longitudinal layers of the beam Hence, beam will also be subjected to the shear stresses. We learnt the previous session and we derived an equation of shear stress that is tau, which has been written over here clearly visualize the equation. Tau is equal to F A Y bar by I B. This tau designated for shear stress at a particular section F that is the shear force acting at that particular section I that is known to all of you moment of inertia B that is the width of section A that is the area of the section above the layer and y bar is the distance of the cg of the area above the layer to the neutral axis so the shear stress given by the above equation is the horizontal shear stress at distance y1 from the neutral axis so now we are going ahead uh, shear stress distribution for different section so in this session we are studying the shear stress distribution diagrams for different sections like rectangular section circular section i section t sections and other specific sections now we have already studied for rectangular section uh, how the shear stress variation will be varied along the depth of a section let us we go to the circular section figure shows a circular section of a beam of radius r let f is the shear force which is acting at particular section 
and consider a level EF at a distance Y from the neutral axis. Please refer a figure section, circular section. This is the neutral axis which is passing through the centroid of the section. Let us consider a layer EF at distance Y from the neutral axis. R is the radius of section. Y is the distance of layer EF from the neutral axis. Now, the stress stress at any section which is given by an equation tau is equal to Fa y bar by Ib. Interesting and important thing A y bar. A y bar area multiply by perpendicular distance which is designated a term that is a moment. That is A y bar is equal to moment of the shaded area above the neutral axis. If you refer the previous figure, please refer the figure. Moment of the area. This means the area of this curved shaded portion multiplied by the y bar. Y bar is nothing but the distance of the CG of this curved area to the neutral axis. That gives a moment of the shaded portion. Sorry. Uh, B is the width of the beam at the level EF. Repeat the word 10 times. Width of the beam at the level EF. So, if you want to refer this figure, this is the width EF is there. The width available over here. It is not equal to the Na. It is not the diameter of a section which is lesser than the diameter of the section. I is the moment of inertia of the whole section. So now, it is difficult for us to find out the area directly with the certain formula. Hence, consider a strip of thickness dy at a distance y from neutral axis. Let dA is the area of a strip. Then dA is equal to b multiplied by dy that is the uh, b that is the width multiplied by dy that is the thickness of the strip. The thickness of strip that is ef sorry b width of the strip is ef ef multiplied by dy that is nothing but twice the eb by dy twice eb interesting point if you want to refer a figure this is the width b ef which is equal to twice eb b, why i have taken the twice eb to use the function of r to use the value of r because why it is certain known parameter r which is known parameter so if i want to find out the value of eb i have to use r and y because we know that the r square is equal to eb square plus y square so if i want to find out the value of eb then eb is equal to under root of r square minus y square multiply by 2 to carry out the twice value of this so if you are referring over here it is nothing but twice multiplied by under root of r square minus y square into dy. That is nothing but the area of a smaller strip. Now, the moment of the whole shaded area d about neutral axis which is given by y into dA. That is y into 2 into r square minus y square into dy. And this is nothing but a into y bar. I think you will understood the things because I am interested to found out a y bar i b and f and I have to put the all these values in these equations to find out the value of tau, tau that is the shear stress for circular section. Now to found out a y bar and I as I told previous case it is difficult for us to obtain the value of moment of the area because it is a curved portion we do not know the formula hence we have divided into the small strip. Hence, moment of the whole shaded area d about neutral axis which is given by these equations y into the area that is the twice under root of r square minus y square into dy. So, 
moment of the whole seeded area about neutral axis is obtaining by then integrating the above equation between the limit 0 to r by integrating this a y bar which is equal to minus sign 0 to r 2 y under root of r square minus y square into dy and while this integrating we obtain this minus 2y is the differential of r square minus y square hence the integration of the above equation becomes as a y bar is equal to r square minus y square raised to 3 by 2 by 3 by 2 and which is varied from y to r by putting all these values and we carried out this doing certain trials for mathematics we found a y bar is equal to two third bracket r square minus y square raised to three by two this is the simplification of the simple integration procedure now substituting the value of a y bar in the fundamental equation that is tau is equal to f a y bar by i b f its value is f a y bar is we are converting in terms of r and y that is 2 third of r square minus y square raised to 3 by 2 divided by i b. Now b that is known to us that is the uh, value with e f that is nothing but the twice into e b that is nothing but twice into r square minus y square and if we doing the substitution in the basic fundamental equation we got an equation tau is equal to f into two third bracket r square minus y square raised to three by two divided by i into two into under root of r square minus y square i wish you have understood how uh, uh, i have obtained the value of b if you want to refer once again, let us refer once again and go back to the figure which has been stated over here. Uh, this is the width B available for a layer EF, which is nothing but B is equal to EF, which is nothing but twice EB, which is nothing but twice under the root of R square minus Y square. And we are replacing the same thing over here in the equation. And we got the tau is equal to f over e i bracket r square minus y square. See these equations very fundamentally. As this equation shows that the shear stress distribution across a circular section is parabolic. How? For a circular section and for a particular section, these two words are very much important. For a circular section, r is constant for a particular section also the i value is constant and hence my tau is directly proportional to the minus terms of y square and it is minus terms of the y square term y square means it is of parabolic nature also it is minus term the y square which is associated with this term here in terms of minus sign it means that when y is 0 my tau which is goes maximum question may arise in our mind at what location y is 0 y is 0 means it is the neutral axis location and y is maximum at what location y is maximum at the both top and bottom fibers the value of tau is zero so my value of tau varies from maximum from neutral axis to the extreme fibers in terms of parabolic nature hence it is clear that with the increase of y the shear stress decreases and at y is equal to r the shear stress r is equal to 0 hence shear stress will be maximum when the y is equal to 0 that is at the neutral axis 
Hence, the shear stress is maximum at the neutral axis and given by tau is equal to F by E into R square. Now, tau is equal to F by E into R square, but we know, we know this fundamental things, I is equal to pi by 64 D raised to 4. Moment of inertia of a circular section about neutral axis is given by pi by 64 D raised to 4. D is equal to twice R is equal to pi by 64 to r raised to 4. By simplifying this, I achieve the value of moment of inertia in terms of the r, that is pi by 4 r raised to 4. Hence, tau maximum is equal to f by e pi by 4 r square. And by simplifying this, we achieve 4 by 3 into f by pi r square. <laughs> now, we know that the average shear stress is equal to shear force by area of circular cross section f by pi r square. So, this f by pi r square is the average shear stress. So, tau max is equal to 4 by 3 times the average shear stress. So, tau max is equal to 4 by 3 into tau average. <laughs> And this is the figure which is clearly shown the variation of shear stress across the section. You can visualize at the neutral axis, this is the tau max. As we proceed from neutral axis to the outermost fiber, as the value of R increases from the neutral axis to the top fiber, from Y equal to 0 to Y maximum, that is R, the value of tau becomes goes 0 and maximum available at the neutral axis. And this variation is in terms of parabolic nature. I wish... You have understood this fundamental very well. Let us be proceed further with the solution of one or two simple problems. Now, we are going ahead with this problem. Please refer the data. 